This is a revision video for the GCSE physics topic of changes of momentum and we're going to look at this through the applied lens of car safety features. By the end of this video you should be confident in calculating changes in momentum, calculating a force exerted by change of momentum and explaining how the various safety features of a car help to reduce the force experienced during a car crash. If you're taking the higher tier of GCSE physics, then you've already met the ninth equation on the physics equation sheet, which tells us that momentum is calculated by multiplying together mass and velocity. Now, what we can then do is say that the change in momentum, if an object's velocity changes, is made up of the mass multiplied by that change in velocity. We don't have change of mass in here because, let's be honest, the mass of an object is not going to change just because it's moving. Let's practice using this formula to calculate some changes in momentum. Now there are two ways you can do this which will both get you the same right answer. So in this worked example we have a 1000 kilogram car and it's moving at 20 meters per second but then it breaks until its velocity is only 5 meters per second. In the first method we work out the momentum at the start and the end and then look at these two numbers to calculate the difference. So to begin with, the 1,000 kilogram car is moving at 20 metres per second. So I do 1,000 multiplied by 20 to get 20,000. This is the amount of momentum that the car has at the start of the question. Then, after it breaks, it's only moving at 5 metres per second. So again, I take the mass of 1,000 and I multiply it by that new velocity to get a total momentum of 5,000 kilogram metres per second. If I then work out the difference between those two numbers, I can see that the change in momentum has been 15,000 kilogram meters per second. The alternative, and to be honest, slightly faster method that you can use, is to work out what the change in velocity has been, and then just multiply the mass by that change in velocity. So the mass of 1,000 multiplied by 20 take 5, which is of course 15, gives us a change in momentum of 15,000 kilogram meters per second. As long as you're confident using brackets, then I've got the same answer using fewer steps. Here's an opportunity for you to pause the video and calculate the change in momentum for each of these eight questions using which of the two methods you prefer. So for this first question, our car still has a mass of 1000 kilograms. So either we can work out how much momentum it has at the start, 25,000 um, kilogram meters per second and then how much momentum it has at the end well it's stationary so of course it's zero I don't actually need to do a calculation there and then the difference between those two is of course 25,000 because actually at the end it's zero so the difference between any number and zero will just be the number or I can use the second method and do a thousand multiplied by 25 take zero I'm going to carry on with the second method just because it's a little bit faster so for question two, we've got a 900 kilogram car and the difference in velocity is going to be 30. So that will be 27,000 kilogram meters per second. For our third question, 800 kilograms multiplied by 10 is gonna be 8,000. And then we have 16,500 kilogram meters per second, 10,000 kilogram meters per second, 4,500 kilogram meters per second, 1,600 kilogram meters per second, and 19,800 kilogram meters per second. And those are the same answers that you would have got if you'd used the first method. Now, for the next calculation that we're going to do, we need to use equation number three from the second physics equation sheet. So not the first sheet with the 23 equations you need to memorize, but the second one that has some of the trickier, more applied ones that you do get given in the exam. Now, I know I just said that you are gonna get given this next one in the exam, but in my experience, if you understand where it comes from, that's going to make it much easier for you to answer the tricky questions that ask you to do more than just substitute in numbers and do a calculation. And we can derive this new equation based on three that we've already memorized. So the first one of these is number eight from the first physics equation sheet. Force is mass multiplied by acceleration. Now the seventh equation on that first sheet actually defines acceleration for us. So you know that acceleration is about the change in velocity divided by time. This little um, triangle symbol here is a capital delta. It's a letter from the Greek alphabet, and it means a significant change. And I'm just using it here because it takes up a bit less space and means that I can keep the font size nice and big. So acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. And now that I know that, I can replace acceleration in my first equation with change in velocity over time. 
So now it looks a bit like this. Force is mass times change in velocity divided by time. Now you might be wondering why would I bother doing that? That's just made things more complicated, but there is a reason. We've just been saying that momentum or change in momentum is mass multiplied by change in velocity. And you can see that the numerator of my fraction in that force equation is mass times change in velocity. So now I can swap in change in momentum instead. Force is change in momentum divided by time. This is that new equation, that equation number three on the second physics equation sheet. And what it actually tells me is about the size of a force that an object experiences when its motion changes. So if I'm in a car crash and I lose a certain amount of momentum because I was moving really quickly and then I stop, how much force I feel is directly linked to how long it takes me to stop. So before we start looking at how cars are designed in order to increase that time during a car crash, let's just look at some calculations. So in this worked example, I have an 800 kilogram car slowing from 20 meters per second to stationary in four seconds. And I want to know what will be the size of the force that is exerted on that car. The first thing I need to do is to calculate the change in momentum. So my 800 kilogram car has changed velocity from 20 to zero, and therefore its change in momentum was 16,000 kilogram meters per second. Now we need to know that the force will be that change in momentum divided by the time. So 16,000 divided by four gives me a force of 5,000. And as we know, forces are always measured in newtons. To save you some time for the next eight questions, I've used the same scenarios that we had before. So the changes in momentum are the same ones you've already calculated, but now for each one, you need to calculate the force experienced. Pause the video and do your eight calculations and then we'll come back and look at some answers. So we'd already said that this first car would experience a change in momentum of 25,000 kilogram meters per second. We now divide that by five to work out that the force experienced is 5,000 newtons. Then for question number two, we've already said that the change in momentum is 27,000 kilogram meters per second. So then we divide that by the six seconds it's taken for this change in velocity to um, happen. And we work out that the force experienced is 4,500 newtons. Using that same process, we can then work out that each of the forces exerted is this. So the reason that we care about all of this is that the longer it takes for a change in momentum to take place, the smaller the force experienced will be. So all sorts of safety features are to do with extending the time it takes for a change in momentum to take place. You've probably encountered this at some point in your life, jumping off a high wall. Even a one and a half meter drop is enough to really hurt your feet. But if you jump on a trampoline, you can fall from a much greater height than this without it hurting. This is because as the bed of the trampoline gives, it takes a longer time for the same change in momentum to occur. So the force that you experience is smaller. We're now going to look at three safety features that modern cars include in order to make you safer in the event of a car crash. We could use the same physics to describe how cycle helmets or gym crash mats keep you safe. The important thing to remember here is that you must describe these in terms of momentum you won't get the marks in an exam for saying that a seatbelt keeps you safe because it stops you going through the windscreen or saying that airbags that keep you safer because they're soft. You need to be talking about momentum. The first car safety feature we're going to look at is a crumple zone. If you've ever seen a picture where a really old car and a modern car have crashed and the old car looks fairly unscathed, but the new car has its front completely smashed up like this, you're looking at the crumple zone. You might have even seen comments like they don't make cars like they used to, but actually the modern scrumpled up car is far safer for the driver. Simply put, the car scrumples so you don't have to. In a car crash, all the momentum of the vehicle must be dissipated and the amount of momentum it has is influenced by its mass and how fast it's traveling. In the process of the crumple zone crumpling, the car takes longer to come to a full stop than it would otherwise. This longer time means that the force felt is smaller and that reduces the risk of a serious injury to the driver. Our second safety feature is the airbag and this is the one where time and again we find students panicking, forgetting all physics and just saying an airbag keeps you safe because it's a nice soft landing. That's not going to get us any marks, we need to talk in terms of momentum. 
So, first things first, the change in momentum will be the same whether or not you have an airbag. At the start of the scenario, you have as much momentum as your mass multiplied by your velocity, and at the end, you have none. So all of that momentum has to be got rid of somehow. If you go face first into an airbag, rather than the steering wheel or the dashboard, then it's going to take you a longer time to slow down, because the airbag has some give in it, a bit like that trampoline that we saw someone jumping on earlier. Because the time is longer, we're dividing the same amount of momentum by a bigger number. And that means that the force exerted on the driver or the passengers is going to be smaller. And so again, we're going to reduce the chance of an injury. Finally, we have the seatbelt. And again, often in exams, students just completely forget to write about physics and they start saying things like, a seatbelt keeps you safe because it stops you going through the windscreen. Well, that is true, but so would a steel bar. But we don't use a steel bar because if we did, then the force of that bar on your chest as you tried to stop the car would probably crush your chest and break your ribs and be about as bad as going through the windscreen in the first place. The important thing about seatbelts is not that they hold you back, it's that actually they don't hold you back completely. They're made of fabric and they have a mechanism that allows them to stretch slightly. Not enough for you to go headfirst into the dashboard, hopefully, but that slight stretch means that you actually carry on moving forward for a slightly longer amount of time. So because the change in momentum is still the same, because you still have the same mass and you are still going at the same velocity, but the time has increased, the size of the force that you feel is reduced. And therefore, there's a lower chance of you having a serious or fatal injury. Thank you very much for watching and thank you also to the friends who gave me pictures of their car crashes for use in this video. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE physics videos coming soon.